Michael, I just wanted to say I'm so proud of you. It's nice to see you enjoying yourself. I hope you see new things. I hope you feel new things. But most of all, I hope you understand that this time is yours. Love, Mom. See the world like an insider with Chase Sapphire Reserve. Make more of what's yours. My name is Jen Yamato. I'm a film reporter at the LA Times. Welcome to the Chase Sapphire Lounge for a very special panel about my old ass. Uh, this is a film premiering tonight at Sundance uh, by a filmmaker named Megan Park. Now, Megan Park made her directorial debut, The Fallout, last year, starring Jenna Ortega and Maddie Ziegler. It won the Grand Jury and Audience Awards at South by Southwest and has been described as the first defining movie of Gen Z. Megan might have a second one on her hands with My Old Ass, which is a coming-of-age comedy with a very, very high concept. We're going to hear a little bit about it. Let's bring out Megan Park. <laughs> Joining Megan, we have some of the stars of the film. Megan, please take whatever seat you like. <laughs> please give a warm welcome to Maisie Stella. <laughs> We've also got Maddie Ziegler <laughs> and Carice Brooks. Yeah, everybody, okay, everybody has a little water and a little microphone. Um, we're going to start off with you, Megan. It seems a natural place to start. Uh, this movie has such a fun concept and such a sweet heart. How, how do you describe it, the, the, I guess, the, the premise of it? My autobiography. <laughs> um, no, I think it's, yeah, it's a coming-of-age comedy. I think it's very nostalgic and feel good hopefully and it's just a lot of fun so the okay the, the the plot of my old ass what you need to know because it premieres tonight in the premiere section very exciting is it's the summer before college for elliot played by that's me Maisie. <laughs> Maisie. Uh, uh sorry i was, gonna say, I was gonna say, saying Maisie turns elliot's turning 18 years old it's a really pivotal summer and she and her friends decide to go on a little trip to an island to take a another little trip on mushrooms. During said trip, there's a special appearance by Elliot's older self, which is where the movie really gets going. Okay, so Megan, take us into the inspiration behind this, this idea. Like I said, it's my autobiography. <laughs> um, you know, I was on the heels of the fallout, which was obviously a much darker film and the subject was heavy and it was a heavy space to be in naturally for a long time making that movie. I was home in Canada and I was feeling really nostalgic and thinking about this beautiful place, Muskoka, where I grew up going every summer. And I was just, I think we all have these fantasies about, you know, if you could go back and give yourself, your younger self advice, what would it be? And I just, you know, it was all kind of spurred from that, really. So, okay, I want each of you to please take us through your characters. Just give us a little tidbit, because nobody has yet seen the film. How do you describe each of your characters at the, at the start of the film? Um, I play Elliot, and Elliot was, like, written to be very bright. And I loved that from the beginning, because I feel like I have always seen movies where, like, the lead character is, like, very brooding and mysterious, which also was great, but it was Especially just... teenagers. Yeah, just like, it's always that, and then I would always watch those movies and then mimic them, and then be in my real life, be like, all like brooding and mysterious, and it's just, I just loved that Elliot was like, just very bright and fun and like, expressive and happy and still has weight to her, but um, yeah, it was like very, very bright. I would exp I would describe her character, not me, her character. I tried to do it, but... Um, You're pretty bright too. <laughs> But yeah, I would I would describe Elliot as that. <laughs> <laughs> Hi guys, my name is Carice, and I play Ro, uh, R O, no W, and I would describe Ro as 
they are a very what I love about Ro is they're very like go with the flow type of person and they just are very expressive and like in the moment and I think that even like they inspired me to like really play into that and like become that of myself and just live in the awkward moments and she definitely they definitely live there she's a she they and they they definitely live there so that's Ro no W I play Ruthie, um, who kind of feels like the mom of the group, which is myself, really. So it was not hard to play this role for me. Uh, she is definitely the more timid. I, I feel like she d she doesn't have it all figured out. Um, a little like very cautious, very like afraid of the world almost. I would say a little. Am I? Yeah. Definitely, okay. Yeah. Um, and she's just kind of there for the ride. I think she's definitely like that friend in the group that's just like very loving and sweet and happy to be there, but very like maternal. I would yeah, say. Yeah, yeah definitely. definitely. And of course, Aubrey Plaza, little known actor, I don't know if anybody's heard of <laughs> Aubrey Plaza, plays older, your older self, Maisie. Maybe, maybe both of you talk about, A, how do you cast two actors to play kind of the same character who are also different characters at very different stages in their lives? And then, and then what was that chemistry like to, to see on, on screen? Well, we cast Maisie first because younger Elliot's in every frame of the movie and it was really important to find the right person. And then we spend a lot of time in like, who looks like Maisie? Who's the best, <laughs> you know, physical match? And then, you know, I, I kind of was like, who has the same energy as her and who I, do I think will vibe with her the most? And I'm a huge Aubrey fan, as is Maisie. And um, it was, it, it came together really easily. I mean, we sent her the script and she responded to it and I Zoomed with her and we just clicked. And she was only in town for like a week, but it was a dream. It was so yeah, amazing. It really was. And their chemistry was just immediate. It was incredible. I think, yeah, we definitely did like for a long time, we were searching for someone that was like, when you see us next to each other, you're like, oh, that's the same person. But like, we're not the same person. <laughs> that's just not, uh, yeah, I think energetically, it was like more important to find that. And also from 18 to 40, like you are going to be quite different. There's no way around that. And we leaned into it. We, we, we did. We it for some jokes. For sure. Yeah. And I think that, it actually is very endearing how different we are, and um, she's kind of like the hardened like version of Elliot a little bit, like uh, with her wall up a bit more, um, which I actually thought was so nice to see. Um, I actually wrote Old Ass to be in uh, her 50s originally. That was the script. And then I started hanging out with these guys, and I was like, they were literally like, so what's middle age like? Asking me, and I was like, oh yeah, like late 30s when you're 18 is, old and so I like how dare you <laughs> I never felt older in my life than ah, hanging out yeah, yeah, yeah. god bless them but, um and so I rewrote the character um last minute to be in like their late 30s early 40s well okay we're not gonna get into any spoilers because you'll have to go watch the movie but we can describe maybe the first meeting between uh between Elliot and Elliot mm -hmm. and kind of a lot of that those dynamics are what you're talking about like uh, sort of addressing the differences, the similarities. Yeah. Uh, there's a definite vibe that the two of them share, and it's such good energy on screen. It's so fun to watch. What was that like to film? Oh, my God. Filming with Aubrey was so insane. I was super nervous. It was my first movie, and I was really nervous to work with Aubrey because I was such a huge fan of her. And she just, like, immediately after meeting her, it was just she was very comfortable to be around. And she was so, so lovely to me. And, like... I just said this before, but like she offered so much like support and like help when we were filming. We're like uh, just in a vibe sense. Like she, yeah, she was. There was so much improv. She's so fun to work with, and um, she always really like wanted to make sure that she was giving me everything I needed and vice versa. And it was just like it was. A, we created a pretty instant bond. I think in that way. Yeah, the vibe was the vibe was always really good. I the think the vibe was there. The vibe was there, and she <laughs> was also interesting watching Aubrey because she was from the second she met Maisie, obviously studying her quite a bit, and it was that was so. She wore my she wore my tattoos, which was the coolest thing ever. Seeing Aubrey Plaza with my like tattoos on her was so sick. But yeah, I don't know if it's actually you can see that in the movie. I don't know if that's like in any of the shots. Can bit. you? Yeah, yeah. But yeah, that like just things like that where obviously. Because I was cast first and I was already like kind of, I guess, established in that character that I think in any other sense it would have been me kind of mimicking her. But it was kind of the other way around, which was s well, every time I talked, she was like, 
just like staring deeply at me and like I could tell that she was just taking notes. It was she so funny. She sitting like you. Yeah, she did. She like <laughs> altered things a little bit. It was so funny. Take me into where you filmed. You mentioned Muskoka, Canada. Shout out Canada. Oh. Cokes. So you, s- you, set, you set the story there and you filmed there? Yeah, which was that usually you're like, you're going to film in Atlanta. And you're like, okay. Um, but no, it, it's a very unique place. It's, I, it's beautiful. It's lake country. It's like Hamptons-y kind of, but a little more rustic in Canada. It's north of Toronto. And I grew up going to summer camp there on an island every year and renting cottages and spend a lot of time there. It's very beautiful. Anybody who goes there falls in love with it. Um, I think we all dream about <laughs> retiring in oh. Lake Muskoka. Um, but yeah, it was really special to actually get to film there. And it was it was like real summer camp. I mean, we all had cottages close to each other and we would get to boat to dinner together. And um, there was one location that was faster for me to jet ski to work every morning than drive because you had to drive all there on the lake. So I got to jet ski to work. I was like, this work. is amazing. This is a dream come true. Okay. Like no other filmmaker. You're never going to hear another filmmaker say they jet skied to work, to set. Insane. <laughs> we all spent some time on the jet ski. We, oh, we oh, did. Soul we searching the on the jet, jet ski. <laughs> also, I, very unexpectedly, when I got on the jet ski, I went ham, which is like so unlikely. <laughs> we were scared. <laughs> like screaming. Yeah. Everyone was screaming. And I was like, so, it was just not in my character to so do that. So unexpected. I was you like changed. feeling myself <laughs> on there. Yeah, you were. Yeah. You like let some some things out, I think, yeah. on, on like the jet fast ski. And furious. You were like, yeah. she was so focused. <laughs> we I was screaming. I was screaming. So before they even yell action, they were like, save some screams for like action. And I was just screaming. Mm-hmm. Even just looking at it, I was like, yeah. ah! it was crazy. <laughs> you did. I was screaming so much. Well, Megan, you're not only a writer, director, producer, and exec producer on this, but you are also an actor yourself. You've got so much experience in that regard. And I want to get to, to hearing how your acting experience informed how you write and direct, but how does it inform your casting process? Oh, that's a good question. I think um, it definitely has helped me as a director because I think I just spent so many years working with different types of personalities of actors and figuring out what people need and don't need from me very quickly. And also, you know, working with directors where I really like things and really didn't like things. And I also was a young actor. I was acting at their age and I um, take that role very seriously to protect the environment for young actors on a set. So trying to rewrite history sometimes a little bit with that, hopefully. Um, But in the casting process, I think I'm drawn to people that really embody some some of the natural character, and it's just in there. And then also adjusting the script as I'm writing it once I cast somebody to really make sure it um, is truthful to them in some regard. And also leaning. I mean, I had this amazing, I'm not 18, but I'm writing 18-year-old characters, and I had this great resource in these three amazing actors to be like, what would you say? Would you, how is this joke funny to you? Would you say this in a different way? And trying to just keep it as authentic as possible to the young voice, because like I said, I'm more of an old ass now. So. <laughs> were, there, were there a lot of dialogue changes that y'all were like, eh? No, that's, that's the crazy part about Megan's writing, is it's like writing for a young adult is, I would think, so hard. Even like I would find that so hard to do as a young adult um but she's just like mastered this like in between of like still sounding not like childish but like still accurate to to young and also <clears throat> I feel like I watch a lot of movies where uh it's like super trendy or like you watch it a year later and all the things that you saw like that's not happening anymore like those trends have passed mm-hmm. and you always stay out of that of like out of the super trendy things that will go away quick. So, no, I, there was really no dialogues that I was like, I cannot say that. Like, <laughs> everything was like, there was so many things that we added in that. You had great jokes, and we did lots of great improv. and it was, <laughs> I think, No, it was never me. I think what's great about Megan is she loves to do fun runs, too. Once she feels like, I feel like we got it good, then she's like, okay, now just have fun. And usually something great comes out of that as well. And furthermore, to hop on the Megan train, What's amazing about Megan is I'm fairly new to acting. I've only been acting since 2021. And already I've even, because before this I was a professional dancer and I've worked with a lot of, like like she said, personalities. And not saying one's better than the other, but there is a wide range of personalities out there. And working with Megan, it's, I have this photo of you. It's literally on my wall. She, the way she approaches things, it's so, like she said, it's so open. And it just fosters that safe environment where it's like, you might sound stupid, but like, that's all right. And we're just going to have fun and we're going to keep going. So she's just one of the most like gentle, but also like, I don't know, you're like a curator. Mm-hmm. 
of sorts. Thank you. Add that to the resume. I'm embarrassed. <laughs> I mean that. Thank you. Maisie, this is your first feature starring mm -hmm. a role as an actor, which is really exciting to see after obviously seeing you on television's Nashville <laughs> and everywhere in your musical career. Uh, what made you like gravitate towards this as a first role? Oh my gosh. I feel like it was just my favorite script that I that I'd ever read. I feel confident saying that, honestly. It really was, and I, I feel like I figured out, I've been auditioning for so long now, that like I figured out how to not get attached to scripts, like, unless it's like full on happening. And this one, I just read it, and I was like, there was nothing, I was completely attached to it. And um, yeah, I just loved the character, I loved the idea of it, I loved literally every beat of it, it was just like so there, and I felt like, I just like knew it was right. Um, yeah, I thought I was going to be, like, many, many years down before I got to do a movie that I felt like I had feelings for. <laughs> like, a movie that I, I, like, have feelings for this movie. I, like, loved it so much, and I, uh, I will never wrap my head around that being, like, my first movie. My first project is, like, I know how, how crazy and lucky um, that is. And Carice, this is a big first in, in some ways for you as well, mm -hmm. acting-wise. Tell me about the transition from being a professional dancer on like the most elite sort of level mm -hmm. to like pursuing acting and <laughs> the two dancers two here. Insane. Crazy. I know. Well, obviously we're gonna get to Maddie. Oh, yeah, we're gonna get to Maddie. Oh. But for, for you, this is yeah, can we do some name dropping really quick? Rihanna, Billy Eilish, <laughs> no, 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 no. crazy. <laughs> YouTube, her dance video. Well, this is a big first for you, acting wise. What was that like to pursue? What were you looking for? And what made you sort of connect with this character? Ooh. When did it, this one was made in 2022. <laughs> actually, yeah. Mm -hmm. So I know, right? Jesus, actually, <laughs> wait a minute, sorry. Um, this is a, such a crazy experience for me because I feel like I didn't come out, I'm from DC and when I moved to LA, I didn't really move with a bucket list. I just like to have fun and just like, uh, I guess go with the flow. Um, <laughs> and I just like to see whatever comes my way. I'm grateful for whatever comes my way because I just like to create art in general. And so I remember when I saw uh, a movie called The Fallout. I don't know if you guys, like two people up here are part of that movie. I don't know. But I saw that movie. And the thing is, I when I watch movies, I don't watch trailers. I don't like to see anything. I just like to watch it day of just to see how I feel. And when I watched that, I was like, I've never felt so accurately portrayed as a generation and as a spirit of a generation because I think that, like Maisie said, the way we're portrayed is very like, 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 yes. like, come on out. Like, <laughs> bruh, and that, that just, it kills me. <laughs> it kills so me. Perfect. That Thank summed you. it all up. That was it just kills me. And so when I saw that, I was like, dang, like we're being portrayed accurately. And so when this opportunity came along and being, a new answer, a, a, what? A new actor and transitioning from dancing to acting. I feel like, and I'm still working past this, but I feel like I'm still in a space where I don't know what I can do because I haven't done it yet or I haven't even attempted to do it. So to be even thought of, to think that maybe she can do this or I don't know how much she believed in me when she thought of me I, I DM'd her I was a fan a, a fan of her dance I have a lot of dance friends and love the dance community and I had been following her for a while and um, we had read like so many her. people for the role and I, I didn't even know that you were acting and I was just like I feel like she would kill it and I just crazy. reached out and, and then I had the cast to reach out to her team and would you be interested in putting yourself on tape and I remember we got the tape and I, Maisie and I watched it and we were like this is the best tape we've ever seen in our lives. Which is crazy because when I taped it, I was like, I'm not getting this. Let's just like, let's just like I have some I was fun. rooting for yeah. her so hard just from the start. I like, the her tape made me like laugh, actually laugh. Thank it's you. the best. <sighs> Stop. <laughs> I'm a crier. But long story short, yeah, it was, it's, a, it's been a crazy transition and, um, you know, you just never know where you're going to end up and I'm just really grateful for the moment and to be in the moment and to be with these beautiful, beautiful people <laughs> and I just... Yeah, I don't know. Just overwhelming gratitude. Mm. Everything. Well, Maddie. Oh. Um, you, you go way back with Megan. I do. 
Um, she has to be in everything I ever read. Yeah. <laughs> I hope we continue that streak. We will. We will. <laughs> uh, but, yeah, so I did the fallout. And then, obviously, I mean, me and Maisie have known each other since we were nine years old. So we've dreamt of doing a movie forever. And the fact that it's happened and that it's Megan that put us together is really crazy. Uh, but Megan, I knew that she was obviously writing this movie and knew that Maisie was attached and then obviously heard about Carice as well. And then it kind of last minute, like right leading up to shooting, <laughs> Megan was like, um, kind of crazy, but would you want to read for the role and do it maybe? And I was like, yes. Like I, we talked about potentially doing like a little cameo for fun. Yeah, it was a smaller role. I didn't know if she would be interested in coming in and doing I was it. happy I to play the lifeguard. I was really <laughs> happy to do that. Um, I just wanted, I also was like, I just want to come like hang out for a little bit because I just love everyone involved. Um, but yeah, it was really fast and I was just so, it was just an immediate yes. There was no thought behind it other than like, yes, I'm coming and doing it because I obviously adore everyone here and I adore the crew. There were so many people that were on the fallout that um, actually transitioned over to this movie as well. So it's one big family and it was a very easy thing to say yes to. I, I was so happy to do it. And then once Maddie agreed, I like made her editor into so much more of the, <laughs> the movie. Yeah. I was like, yes, okay. Great. I was Maddie's happy it. to like just be there. I, I I, I really, like, I adore the script as well. I remember reading it before I was even attached to it. So um, I was just, like, f so floored by it. So I, I was just so happy to be a part of it. Maddie is the lifeguard, just so we know. <laughs> I almost drawn so many times. And Maddie, yeah, you wouldn't see me I here. do wear a life vest, which you will see. I did notice that. Life vest over a dress, right? Yeah. yeah. Ooh, Important, safety first. Um, so watching this, it, like we, we mentioned, the setting is so beautiful. It makes you want to live your best cottage life. Um, but it's also just such a, a beautiful setting for the friendship between these three young people who are about to go, you know, I guess in different, different directions. Um, tell me about the bonding process. I know you obviously, some of you knew each other before, but what was it like to actually get to set? to get to the, the setting that you are going to play the story out in? And how did you, you know, make those connections? What did, what were you blasting on your, on your what music were you listening to? <laughs> I'm just wondering, I'm just guessing that there was music involved. Everybody here is like... Oh, there's musical. always music involved. Um, honestly, yeah, me and Maddie have been very tight since we've like really grown up together. So there was not much additional bonding needed there. But I felt such an immediate like, borderline obsession with Chris. <laughs> um yeah yeah with you uh from very like early on like I just was just like so excited to be around you all the time you're such a like you just light everything up and make everything so fun and I yeah I think we have like the perfect uh dynamics as like a little trio I think we have all the all the things that you need and I think we just honestly worked really well like filming together it was just like always just a good time and yeah we didn't honestly didn't film to all three of us together that much like it wasn't that long of a period that we did it like consistently but we did have a blast I would say yeah there's a <clears throat> very special scene that I will not spoil and I leave it to you how much you want to reveal I've been told to reveal nothing <laughs> okay we know what we're talking about but obviously nobody else does but it's it involves a lot of preparation between the three of you and some musicality and tapping into each of your additional talents. When you see this movie, you'll know, ex like, lit you will literally know exactly what I'm talking about. I'll just tell you. It's fire belly dancing. We did, like, belly oh dancing. Oh, my God. You scared me. You scared me. You said, okay, I'll just tell them. <laughs> I don't want to be in trouble. Yes, we belly dancing. Was that a special, a special moment to prepare for together? It was yeah. the best day of Maisie's life, <laughs> I will say. And once you see the movie, you will understand. I have never it seen her in such a state. She I couldn't get out of it, person. actually. And I know you guys don't know what I'm talking about, but it was, this, it was this energy that I had to really hone into. And once I did that, I was stuck there, and I couldn't get out of it. And it was actually the rest of the shoot was quite difficult for me to not uh, be in that I'm not going to say anything. But, yeah, it was, it. I was really attached. I feel like it helped, day. too, that we had a night shoot. And yeah. there there were a few bears that were uh, in our crafty. So I think yeah. the adrenaline was, like, insane yeah. that night. I was off, like, six Red Bulls. I, the medic actually put a cap on my Red Bulls that I was allowed to drink when we were filming. I, and especially <laughs> on that day, I was just, like, ripping the Red Bulls to keep the energy yeah. up on that scene. 
That's funny because one of my uh, one piece, if I could give my younger self advice, would be stop drinking so much Red Bull. It's gonna That's make you one. feel like you're gonna happen. <laughs> not gonna happen. <laughs> We're going to turn it over to the audience. If anybody has questions, we'll have a microphone to come to you. So just raise your hand if you have questions. I'm gonna start us up. Oh. Oh, we have a question. Hello. So somebody asked us last night of a movie, but what did you experience differently once you watched the film than when you watched it as you were filming? Wow. Me? There was so much that was different, but also I think the um, the energy that was in the script actually was translated into the final, which was so exciting to me because when I read the script, like I feel like I had a very specific visual of it and obviously that all changes throughout the whole thing. But the actual tone of the writing of the movie is the same as what it is at the final, which I'm, I think is like a very big testament to like your writing and the editing and uh, the you know producing and everything like that. But uh, yeah, I think it, it's very different than, w there's so many things that were different than what I imagined them to be, but the overall tone and, and the energy is definitely there from what it was on paper. Maddie Cruz, your experience is watching. I mean, I feel like for me specifically, because they had a few scenes together that I wasn't in, so for me, I felt like I was watching it for the first time uh, as just like, an audience member, because uh, there was so much that I didn't get to see when um, filming. They filmed so much extra stuff. So I really just felt like a first timer watching it, and I kind of put myself in like I didn't even know what was happening, and I just let it ride, and it was, it was. I mean, I obviously cried the whole way through, basically. Maddie did cry. I, like, I sobbed, just because, obviously, it's when you watch someone you love and that you've grown up with, it's so insane to watch. And I just felt like so proud and it was, it was a very out of body experience, but I think also it does spark so much conversation. And I, I know that so many people that have watched it all have that immediate response of, I, I wanted to hug my mom after I saw this movie or when was the last time I, I had a play date versus a hangout? Like all those different questions come up and I love that. I love when, when a movie sparks a uh, conversation and you can't leave without like all these different thoughts and feelings and you go home talking about it in the next day. And I, and I really felt that. Mm -hmm. Furthermore, I also like, like she said, it sparks like a conversation. I think that, that whenever I go into something, I try not to like have any expectations because sometimes if you like expect too much, then it's like the worst thing ever. Um, but then when you expect too low, it's like you're kind of like cheating yourself out of an experience. So I try not to go with any biases or whatever. And this experience in particular, I think when watching the movie, it's it's so cool to see, I mean, we kind of touched on this earlier, but it's so cool to see such a range of characters just coexist in the same world and like, like just have fun and just breathe and... It, the, yeah, the film is such a good, the film is such a, after watching it, it's such a good reminder to me that, you know, you are going to be all right. It, no matter how much you stress and no matter how much you try to, like, hold tight to things, it just, it just, things are going to happen regardless. So just breathe and, yeah, the movie, I still talk about it to this. It's so, uh, it's just, so, you know what I'm saying? Like, you got a little twang to it. I don't know. It's nice. It's, yeah, it's a different experience. You know, there is uh, uh, something I was curious about for you, Megan, in the process of getting the movie made. Margot Robbie's Lucky Chap is one of the produ production companies on this movie, along with Indian Paintbrush. And Margot Robbie is one of the producers, having a bit of a year her herself. Um, is she? Uh, <laughs> what was the process for you like in terms of going from you wrote this script, it's deeply personal, you probably excavated a lot of very personal things and emotions, and then getting it to the people who will help you get it made? Uh, it was a little bit of the reverse with Lucky Chap. I met um, Bronte and Tom and Margot and everyone on the heels of the fallout. And I just, you know, a general meeting. And um, they had sort of asked me, what are you thinking about next? And I was like, OK, I have this weird idea. And I like log line pitched it to them. And they were like, we think that's really interesting. Like we would be, you know, if you want to talk more about this, about that, let, it know, let us know. And um, so I actually really built it with them, with their help, which was amazing. And I mean, 
I'm so happy Lucky Chap is having the moment they're having because it's so deserved. And I, I felt so supported as a filmmaker and they were involved as much as I needed them and they weren't involved in, you know, it was just the perfect experience. And so they were very involved in the process from the ground up, really. And um, Indian Paintbrush as well, they came in when the script was finished and it was a really great experience and the movie came together very quickly. Like by the time it was done, we were filming, you know, within the year, which is quite rare. Smooth it must process. Have filmed during the summer. Yes. yes. <laughs> you can't do that in the <laughs> winter in Canada. <laughs> but yeah, it was a great experience. Any other questions in the audience? Oh, right up here, second row. Hi. Um, so I was wondering, just based off like how you guys talk about the film, I can see that there's a lot of care and love into it. So, and I feel like this will be a good coming of film movie, coming of age movie for a lot of young girls. So I was wondering what coming of age movie do you guys personally love? Ooh, you hate that. Mine's gonna be different than theirs. I, I, I thought about My Girl a lot when I was making this movie. I thought about Now and Then a lot. Those were two for me that are still that like uh, go-to over and over. Like eighth grade. I know that's a eighth little grade. younger, but it's a good one. I love that movie so much. I love eighth grade. I think proper coming of age. I used to be obsessed with the movie Edge of Seventeen, um, <clears throat> and that's like when I think of a coming of age movie. I like that's one that comes to mind. <laughs> Mine is a tie uh, because I am a little uh, moody sometimes, but like not in the unhealthy way. Mine is a tie between every single Twilight and <laughs> you got to um, and the perks of being a wallflower. Oh, oh another Indian like, paintbrush I, film. Yeah. Wait, I, I said that first. No, I think I did. I said perks of being a wallflower. Did you? Spell yeah, check. yeah, yeah. I said that I think it was first. Spell check, so <clears throat> so that's my it. answer, actually, everyone. That's that was me. There's a camera. <laughs> oh, I fully believed you just then. I was like, no. I should hear you. <laughs> but I love that movie. Uh, shout out to Twilight. Thank you. Yes. Um, thank you. We, we're just about out of time. Uh, so I want to thank everybody up here for coming in today. Thank you all for coming here to listen. Go check out my old ass. It's a beautiful film. It's so funny. Thank you for having us. It's so thank wonderful. You so much. So much. Thank, thank you. Thank you. And everyone in the audience, you're going to just stay seated for a minute while our guests depart the stage. Thank you so much. Thank you guys for coming.